Marvel and DC have been duking it out on the big screen for years. But did you know that this rivalry began decades ago with a plan between them to extort money from children? While these comic book companies were writing stories about heroes defeating bullies, they were acting like the bullies stealing their readers' lunch money. And how this secret scheme ended still affects the movies we watch today. When I heard about the scheme, I had to go and investigate it for myself. And so I went and collected data on 300 issues of Marvel and DC Comics. And I'm just gonna show you the data to see if you can guess what was going on. The first comic published under the Marvel name was Fantastic Four number one in November 1961. It cost 10 cents, which was the same price that DC was selling its comics for. So this wasn't a surprise. You want to keep your prices competitive. But just two months later, the third issue of Fantastic Four cost 12 cents. Now, normally it's not very good business to increase the price of a brand new comic book series. But at the same time, DC also raised the price of its comics to 12 cents. Wow. That was fortunate. For the next seven years, the price stayed at 12 cents an issue. Prices were flatter than the humor in a DC movie. You smell good. Did I not before? Bruh. But then in July 1969, DC raised its price to 15 cents. Again, changing your price to 15 cents would be risky, but Marvel happened to also change its price to 15 cents in the same month. Wow, another lucky break. Now prices across companies move together all the time. If a competitor increases its prices, of course you're gonna increase yours to keep up with the market. And there's usually a reason why those prices are increasing. But the strange thing is that these are comic books with the prices printed on the cover. To have the prices change at the same time, to make sure that those covers are printed on time, it seems like you would need to know about the price change in advance. Uh, that was probably a coincidence. This next part is where it gets fun because I actually have physical comic books to show you the price changes that were going on at this time. In summer 1971, both DC and Marvel were selling comics for 15 cents. Then once again, they increased their prices at about the same time. Now given the pattern of prices, maybe you're thinking it's gonna go up to 17 cents. No, maybe 20 cents? No, they let these prices in a single bound all the way to 25 cents. Not only that, both publishers added extra content in the 25 cent issue. Now I can be convinced that changing the price on a comic book cover could be done at last minute, but adding extra content to an issue, that takes months to plan, and yet somehow again, they executed a price change and a content change within weeks of each other. How in the world are they doing the same thing at the same time? Adam Smith, the founder of Modern Economics said, people of the same trade seldom meet together, even for merriment and diversion, but the conversation ends in a conspiracy against the public or in some contrivance to raise prices. I'm sure you guessed it way early, but the accusation is that Marvel and DC were colluding together to raise prices. One Marvel writer said, I don't know what kind of collusion there was, but I can't imagine there was this amazing coincidence when they both changed the price at the same time. Businesses are often accused of collusion, but it's a tricky scheme with a fundamental flaw. And that flaw is the kryptonite that eventually defeated this scheme. Think about what you would do in the following situations. Let's say one of your competitors sees its customers as an ATM ready to be knocked over. They set their prices high. What happens next? You or another competitor would come in and deliver a Spider-Man style beatdown. Because if you set your prices just a little bit lower, then all of your competitor's customers will leave him and come to you. Now, of course, your competitor doesn't want that, so he's gonna lower his prices just a little bit. And then you go back and forth fighting each other until your prices go as low as they can while you both stay in business. That means you're gonna be offering the lowest price and you're gonna be splitting the market between you. Now imagine your competitor approaches approaches you and says, do you want to form an alliance with me? You agree not to compete with each other and you're going to keep prices high. And the reasoning is natural. When you do compete, you split the market, you offer low prices and you get no profit. 
but when you work together, you can offer high prices, still split the market, but now you're making a big profit. Sure, you're acting like supervillains, but it's like the perfect crime, right? Well, the scheme does have a fundamental flaw, and it's exploited in alliances all the time. Just like Jim used Dwight's trust to pull off the perfect prank. If you know your competitor is going to offer a higher price, then you can come in and offer a lower price and capture the whole market. Lots of people, including myself, love this result because what it says is that cartels in these collusive agreements can't be held together because competition forces people to jump out before they're betrayed themselves. But I just showed data that possibly confirms Marvel and DC were colluding for over a decade. Why didn't one of them break? Ah, but somebody did and the reward was high and the celebration was petty. Just one month after Marvel matched DC's price at 25 cents, it dropped its prices down to 20 cents. And for some reason, DC did not drop its price in response, and kids just went for the obvious choice. Dealers are not too keen on the 25 cent comic book, sales are skyrocketing for Marvel, DC's titles are also reported to be dying in droves on the stands. Just like Economics predicts, that year the lower price Marvel captured the market and passed DC in sales for the first time. The company went out to a restaurant to celebrate. The restaurant just happened to be across the street from DC's headquarters. And ever since then, Marvel has dominated, both in comic book sales and now today on the big screen. And because of competition, everyone's better off. Right? Now, I believe that fixing prices is bad, but let me give an argument where I could be totally wrong. Imagine you're one of these kids trying to decide which comic book to buy. Comic books are new, all these stories are new, so you don't really have an attachment to Marvel or DC. You just have a dollar and you're trying to maximize the number of comic books you get with that dollar. So if one book is cheaper than the other, that's what you're going to buy. But imagine the comic books are the same price. Now which one are you going to buy? You're going to choose the one with the better content. It could be a better story, better art, whatever it is. It's the content that's going to be competing with each other, not the prices. Some would argue that when these companies don't have to worry about competing on prices, they can compete on quality instead. Instead of offering the cheapest comic, they try to offer the richest story. And you could say that this is the same thing that happens with movies today. Ticket prices are the same no matter which movie you see. So if studios want you to get into theaters, they have to offer you a movie that is better than anything else you could spend that money on. Now, I'm definitely not advocating for collusion or price fixing. It's just a good example how companies can compete on different margins. And this idea makes a lot more sense after you watch this video where I confronted Star Wars fans and paid them to to go watch Cats in theaters instead. You will not believe how much it cost me.